last but certainly not least, a huge welcome to the Simple AR team. Simple AR is an app that utilizes the power of natural language processing to translate any text into a simplified language, only by taking a picture of it. Flutter and Firebase were the main ingredients used to develop Simple AR. Let's please give a warm, warm welcome to the creators, Almo, Maria, Sami, and Viviana, from the Technical University of Munich in Germany. The concept of functional literacy is based on the UNESCO definitions, which cover a continuum of proficiency levels rather than a dichotomy. You didn't understand the meaning of the sentence? Functional illiteracy, the inability to understand text on more than a basic level, is the reality for one in seven people worldwide. Among others, one common cause is intellectual disabilities. In a world where we communicate mainly through text, people with functional illiteracy are excluded in many ways. UN Goal 10.3 specifically states to empower and promote inclusion of all, including people with disabilities. When talking to experts, we learned that there are simplified language frameworks that help with functional illiteracy. However, these texts are translated by hand, so only very few texts are made accessible. This is where Simple AR comes in. We are using the power of natural language processing to automatically translate any text for functional illiterate people. When first opening the app, the user is introduced into the W3C verified disability friendly UI. In our Flutter app, the user can scan any text. Firebase ML extracts the text and sends it to our backend hosted by Google Cloud. The backend uses a mix of GPT-3 and our own machine learning models to process the text into a simpler version. The simplified text is returned to the client, which then shows it as an AR overlay. Some texts are so complicated that an AR overlay would be unreadable. In this case, we open a new screen with the plain language text and supporting images, as recommended by the plain language framework. Using simple AR, functional literate people can understand any text in any medium independently and we can have a more inclusive world. Hi, hi again, Victor. Hi, Team Simple AR. So good to see you. Dialing in from Germany. That's great. Um, Victor, do you want to introduce yourself again? And I know that you have a couple questions for this team. Thanks, Erika. Hi, team. Hi, everyone. I'm Victor. I'm based out of the mountains of Colorado here in the U.S., where I work remotely as engineering and technical lead at the UNICEF Office of Innovation, where we are constantly exploring and prototyping frontier technologies for the benefit of every child everywhere to build a better world for everyone. And I only bring this up because I think that this should resonate with your participation in this year's Solution Challenge and the, the amazing application that you have built to help um, people with um, disabilities in, in understanding text, which is a, a very, I, I find a very hard problem. So I'm glad that uh, we have this uh, very capable team tackling it. I, I can, this, this question all the judges have asked to other teams, but I feel really compelled to understand this. So I'll ask it again. What was the biggest challenge you faced while building your solution and, you know, give some, put some color on how did you overcome it? Um, so yeah, let me start with the question. So actually the biggest uh, challenge of our project was the text simplification itself. Like you already said, it's a really difficult task. So it may seem maybe at the beginning that it is really simple just to take a text and just to write a simple version of it so that, for example, a two years old child can understand what DNA is or something like that. But for technology, it's like really, really hard. So, and this is because this problem of text simplification is currently one of the most, or like one of the research topics in natural language processing. And there are only a few data sets uh, to use to train a machine learning algorithm on so that it really can give uh, good results at the end. Um, so yeah, and especially in German. And also there are a lot of different possibilities on how to approach this problem. And so like, what, what we did is we collaborated with many experts in natural language processing. So for example, professors or PhD students. And what we did is we evaluated the state of the art methods for text simplification. But what we noticed is that they had their own strengths and weaknesses in different domains. 
So to improve the stability of our models, we combined multiple machine learning methods, including GPT-3, for example, and we created our own pipeline, which adds additional pre and post processing to the text. That's great. And thanks for mentioning uh, or the mention on GPT-3. I just want to make a quick uh, comment to the audience. If you are not aware of this, it's a natural language processing model that is trained on 100 plus billion parameters. So when we talk about complexity, this is, this is the real deal. Um, switching gears, in the demo that we have just seen, the second example simplifies um, legal text for easier understanding, I think, <laughs> something that we could all benefit from. And I'm, but it, but it, has, I, it, it concerns me because it has some implications on the, the legal implications of handling legal text and the liability of, of such. So, you know, what if some important detail is lost and causes the wrong action or, or inaction that negatively affects the individual that is reading the simplified version? Can, can you comment on, on that, please? Yeah, thank you very much for the question. Um, first of all, we want uh, to clarify that Simple AR is not aiming to provide uh, legal advice. Um, instead, we are giving these people um, an opportunity to be more informed um, about what's happening around them. Our main use cases are everyday interactions like uh, reading newspapers, uh, restaurant menus, or for example, emails. But what we did learn in our expert interviews is that, um, for example, people with more severe cases of cognitive disabilities have an assistant to help them with legal matters, and we are not aiming to replace these assistants. Um, but these assistants cannot always be there all the time. So we are closing this gap between everyday life tasks and the tasks where an assistant can help them. Got it. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Much, much better now. Back to you, Erica, for the, the question from the audience. Yeah, sounds good. We got some questions. Um, so the question for all of you is, um, what makes this application different or unique from other translation apps? Sure. So I can start with the, with the answer. So uh, what our app does is it doesn't translate, for example, from English to German, for example. What it does, it, it simplifies the language. So for example, if there's a, like a really complex sentence, like for example, from Wikipedia, and um, there are many people who can't understand this, especially people with disabilities. So uh, what we do is we make these texts more accessible for those people by simplifying these words, for example, using different techniques, for example, um, lexical, lexical simplification by re replacing difficult words or, for example, restructuring the sentences into shorter sentences, making them all more simple and also providing a really intuitive UI, uh, providing more images for them. So what we do is we make text more accessible for people. Yeah, and I also want to add that um, we also mainly focus on texts in physical form, not in internet form, but like in physical form, like um, some of us already mentioned, for example, newspaper, or if you get a letter from some, I don't know, insurance company or something, like we get it a lot in Germany. So um, it's pretty easy to just, you know, take the text, type it down somewhere in Google and simplify it to a simpler version. So with our app, you can just take a photo and you get the simplified text on screen or like with photos, like Alma already mentioned. That's great, thank you. Um, Victor, did you have any final comments? Yeah, just building on what Maria said, I think that we get letters from the insurance companies everywhere in the world, unfortunately, and they are never good news. <laughs> so I think we could all get some help with those. Um, thank you very much for tackling this problem. Uh, jokes aside, I think it is a very uh, important problem that has been unaddressed for a long time. So I'm glad that you are tackling it now. Um, best of luck. Thanks so much. And to the audience, if this was your favorite team, you all have about two more minutes left to vote. So please do vote um, for Simple AR or any team that's your favorite right now at slido.com. And we all know the code is GDSC21. So thank you so much, uh, Simple AR team. So good to learn more about your project. And thank you, Victor. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Bye, everyone. Bye. Great. So thank you all so much for sticking with us for the last couple of hours. We do still have announcements, so do not leave the live stream yet. We haven't heard yet who the top three winners are, the People's Choice Awards, so get ready. 
Um, but first, what did you all think about the demos? Add in the chat, let us know what you thought. Um, I, I loved these demos. It was so cool to see the different bits of technology they use, the different types of uh, uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals they solve for, really inspiring. Um, and I'm wondering if you're thinking about what projects you're going to work on next year for the Solution Challenge. A uh, quick plug is that we will launch it again in January of next year. So I'm excited to see what you all demo next year. Um, so right now is the last opportunity to vote for the People's Choice Award. This is your last chance uh, to vote for your favorite team. So please do that right now. You have two minutes, two minutes left. Message your friends and say, hey, it's time to vote for our favorite team. Um, which team resonated with you? Is there a, a project that inspired you? Maybe you live in the same country as the folks on this team. Whatever your reasoning is, vote for your favorite. You have two minutes left and you go to slido.com, enter the code GDSC21, or you can scan the following QR code and, and vote right now. So you have two minutes, you're on the clock. And what are we going to do in the next two minutes? Um, I'll share that right now. So before we announce the People's Choice Award and the top three winners, um, we wanted to share a few tips and best practices from the students that you've heard from today on how to develop solutions. So I hope that you it will help you as you work on your projects, hopefully for the Solution Challenge next year. Um, but these are some great tips. So let's play that video. Let's check out the tips. <laughs> 